of our ministry one way or the other across the nations to be a part of this prayer conference the theme of this year's conference this prayer conference is prayer shield prayer shield and it's going to be taking place from the 6th to the 8th of august also um in line with this prayer conference we're going to be having three um corporate virtual corporate sessions um on a daily basis that is on thursday 6 a.m to 7 a.m 12 midday to 1 p.m and then um 6 p.m to 7 p.m and it will take the same pattern for the remaining days those three sessions for each of the three days making nice sessions all together are corporate platforms on a virtual plane where people can hook up with us wherever you are in your office in your home in your business district whatever nation you are um, taking residence in so that we can pray together we have like 10 15 minutes of sharing of the word and then we have like 45 50 minutes of praying together in each of those nice sessions and that will be alongside your own personal time before the lord over those three days also on sunday coming sunday being the um, first sunday in the month of august we are going to be having uh, a holy communion in the course of the service so we'd like us to take note of that and prepare for it are going to be having it's going to be a refreshing time it will be a time of impartation as we partake of the body of the lord and of his blood let's take note of that in the course of the sunday service um second of august also remember we have our prayer meetings um prevailers place which holds every saturday um, morning 6 30 to 7 30 in the morning let's please take note of these things hallelujah Tonight, I'd like to continue a discourse we brought to attention from a week ago. We call the title of this one, The Son Sets Free. The Son in this case is the Son of God, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of the Living God. So, The Son Sets Free. And the subtitle for this second part in this um, series is what I call Stand in the freedom stand in the freedom the sun sets free and the subtitle stand in the freedom let us pray father we thank you for your awesome presence again tonight we thank you for the life we have we thank you for the privileges of life we thank you for the added privilege of divine life within this mortal life we thank you for the good things, the great things you are doing in our lives. We thank you for people from all walks of life, various socioeconomic levels, various uh, 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 marital statuses. We thank you, Father, for your hand upon us, your breath within us, and your fever around us. We commit this time into your hands as we look into your word. We ask that you grant us the revelation of your son, Jesus. Help us to comprehend. Help us to be convicted. Help us to be persuaded of the eternal things Jesus secured for everyone who puts his or trust in him. Open our eyes to see your finished works from the foundations of the earth. Open our ears to hear that which your spirit is saying in this hour. And open our hearts to be ready to receive the truth and the eternity of your gospel. We trust you to make us better, make us stronger, and make us to bring you glory. Thank you, Father, because we are prayed in Jesus' name. From a week ago, when we introduced this message, we brought to attention the fact that a major theme of Jesus' ministry was to set men free. In every nation, in every generation, Humanity has been bedeviled with all manner of captivity. People are suffering lockdown. The lockdown that has come upon the nations of the earth in the last few months is just a tip of the iceberg compared to the lockdown of various shades humanity have been captured in over the millennia. And people have been captured by all manner of vices, entire people groups, entire cultures, entire nations, entire territories, and lockdown captured uh, by all manner of vices you find the vices of drunkenness the vices of sexual compromise the vices of identity crisis all manner of vices that has locked men down in our society the captivity of slavery that held men captive for hundreds of years the captivity of addictions addiction to pornography 
addiction to uh, sex, addiction to uh, um, vices and, and, and drugs, addiction of various shades that has bedeviled human beings. Also, we find humanity, especially in our nation, our great nation, a nation with great potentials, we find men, irrespective of social level, the rich, the poor alike, men, women alike, male, I mean, single married alike, who are captured by corruption. The Bible calls it the bondage in Romans chapter 8. The Bible calls it the bondage of corruption. Corruption is a form of captivity. That has held men bound, held entire cultures, entire people groups bound. So humanity has been faced with all kinds of captivity even from the beginning of time. And so when Jesus came into the world, he came with the full consciousness of these forms of captivity that has captured humanity in various ways the captivity of, uh, of, of wrong perspectives to life uh, wrong mental frames the captivity of demonic influences people doing what they would rather not do but they don't have the compelling force to be free of these forms of captivity demonic influences you find generation after generation generation after generation from the same family whether rich or poor giving to pride giving to laziness giving to stinginess giving to stealing and robbery irrespective of where they live because many a times these are forms of captivities demonic captivity so when jesus came into the world he made an announcement and you find this captured after he had been able to to prevail over the ruling prince of lockdowns of captivities the devil in the wilderness you find that report in luke and chapter 4 and then when he left the wilderness and coming in the fullness of the power of god he went into the synagogue in one of those days and he started to declare the mandate of heaven over his life let's see that together here tonight luke chapter 4 from verse 16 to verse 21 he was quoting from the book of the prophet isaiah but he had though isaiah had written these prophecies about 700 years before jesus was born and now 730 years to this time you will see that it had a very great messianic import prophetic import on jesus life hear this luke chapter 4 from verse 16. so he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue, the religious and gathering place, on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, quoting from the book of Isaiah, specifically Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty look at that again the spirit of the lord the anointing of god upon my life he said he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and poverty is a form of captivity whether spiritual poverty or mental poverty or financial poverty poverty is a form of captivity and he said the anointing of my life is to liberate those kind of people who find themselves in the captivity of poverty he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted people who are broken in heart they are under a form of captivity furthermore he said to proclaim liberty or to proclaim freedom to proclaim liberty to captives look at that again people who are bound in any form bound to drug addiction bound to pornography bound to sickness bound to disease bound to cultural um, i mean mental lockdowns generational mindsets generational mindsets of laziness generational mindsets of, of pride he said listen the anointing of god upon my life is to de declare liberty to the captives he said and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord then he closed the book and handed it and back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them today this scripture of liberty for captives of liberty for any form of captivity anyone who finds himself in any form of captivity this day this scripture is fulfilled in your ear so you see jesus knew the mandate of heaven upon his life he did not come for frivolities he did not come just to prance around he did not come just to do just about anything he knew that people are in captivity of various shades actually you also see concerning demonic influences 
all through the times god had been dealing with men by law the laws of moses by the prophets you don't see a situation where human beings by reason of the authority of the law of moses or by reason of the authority of the prophetic where human beings asserted authority over demonic influences but when jesus came into the picture he knew the mandate of heaven upon his life he knew he had the power to set captives free under demonic control under satanic spells and so you see from the ministry of jesus how he cast out demons how he set captives free why because jesus knew that men humanity was under captivity and the anointing on his life was an antidote to such captivities to set men free we brought to us on three levels from a week ago how that jesus how jesus set captives free by his ministry while he was on us the authority demonstrated over demons over the elements supernatural miracles supernatural walking upon the water supernatural multiplication of bread he demonstrated authority over the elements over situations over demonic situations over human limitations he demonstrated uncommon authority so by reason of his earthly life and ministry he set captives free also by going to the cross he provided an eternal avenue for liberty to captives by dying on calvary's cross by being raised from the dead the bible says in romans chapter 4 you read in the last few verses of romans chapter 4 he said by uh, he, he said he justifies us by his resurrection so by his death and resurrection he set captives free by his earthly ministry he set captives free after his death and resurrection and ascension he let loose the holy spirit upon the earth by which he divinely authorized people who trust in him to walk in divine power to be able to walk i mean to be able to set at liberty those who all their lifetimes were subject to bondage so we shared those three levels with us or how jesus set captives free from a week ago but today i want to emphasize that jesus demonstrated authority to set captives free by his life by his death and resurrection by his ascension and letting down the holy spirit from heaven now there is a duty upon us who believe in jesus there is a mandate of heaven upon every believer in jesus upon every saint of the most high that we stand fast in the liberty wherewith christ has set us free yes jesus paid the price yes jesus lived the life yes jesus demonstrated the power yes jesus also delegated the power what he delegates means he has released a measure of what he carries that we may receive of the same to demonstrate the same power over captivities and so that's the focus of our discourse tonight that we learn to stand fast as believers that we learn to stand fast in the liberty where with christ has set us free let me read this here recognizing the freedom jesus procured and secured for us by his life his death his resurrection and delegated authority every christian has a god-given duty to stand in the liberty christ paid the ultimate price for as we begin to study scriptures here tonight you begin to see the language even in scriptures how the believer is expected to stand for dimensions i want to deal with here tonight on how a christian one who has received jesus one who has come under the covering of jesus one who has come under the lordship of jesus how we are meant to stand in the liberty where with christ has set us free four dimensions of taking a stand i take my text here as we get on here from galatians and chapter five galatians and chapter five I like to read Galatians chapter 5 from verse 1. It reads, and I quote, Galatians chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 4. It said, stand fast. When we read some other translations, like the New Living Translation, like the Message Translation, it says, stand fast. I mean, it says, stand firm. So either standing firm or standing fast, 
Look at the language here. Look at the import here. Stand fast, therefore, that is in the light of what Jesus has procured, in the light of what Jesus has secured, in the light of what Jesus has done for us. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again. Don't be caught in the web of captivity. Don't yield to any form of captivity. Captivity of thoughts, captivity of lifestyle, captivity of vices, captivity of environmental influences, captivity of peer pressure. He said, stand fast, therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, because Paul, in that context, the Galatian church, he was dealing with them after he had preached to them. They received Jesus by faith. They were baptized in the Spirit by faith. They experienced the works of God by faith in Jesus. Some other leaders came from amongst the Hebrew Christians to tell these young Christians of Galatia, that listen unless you are circumcised unless you do some things of legalism unless you do some things in the natural unless you hold on to some things in the natural unless you have some signs in the natural you are not really fully saved so paul wrote to dismantle that and to demystify that he says here i paul say to you that if you become circumcised that is circumcision in the flesh natural visible tangible physical circumcision if you become circumcised christ will profit you nothing and i testify again to every man on, who becomes circumcised that is a debtor to keep the whole law you have become estranged or divorced or separated from christ you who attempt to be justified by law you have fallen from grace so on the first level here if you are going to stand in the liberty if you are going to stand to stand in the liberty is to stand in the freedom is that look freedom has been acquired for us by Jesus freedom has been paid for freedom has been secured freedom has been procured whether you're a student or you're a housewife you are a freshly graduated copper you are newly married you're a grandmother you're a grandfather you're a captain of industry in christ jesus there is freedom in christ no matter your location no matter the lockdown social lockdown health lockdown whatever the form of lockdown in christ jesus there is freedom now he's saying don't just be aware of the freedom jesus has secured for us he says stand fast in that freedom stand fast in that liberty and like like i said four dimensions where every believer is expected to stand in the freedom jesus procured and secured for us on a first level we're expected and that was even where i closed on from a week ago we're expected to stand firm in christ that is positionally as a believer irrespective of your physical location irrespective of your gender or status you must be found to be hidden with christ in god stand firm in stand firm stand firm in stand fast I mean, fast in christ by that we mean that the totality of your life the essence of your life is found completely in jesus the Bible describes in Colossians chapter 2, he said he is the fullness of all things. The Bible makes us understand the same letter of Colossians. He said in him is the fullness of, of all things. In him we live and move and have our being. You'll find that in another passage of scripture. So on a first level, be found to, be a, a, to engage Christ, to embrace Christ, to be found in Christ. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10 makes us to understand he said the name of the lord is a strong tower and that name is the name of jesus the name of the lord is a strong tower or a fortress a fortified place you throw pandemic against it pandemic cannot prevail there throw lockdown against it lockdown cannot overwhelm it throw any manner of vice of this world assault of hell demonic influence against this strong tower this strong tower will be found standing and standing strong. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And then look at the caveat there. The righteous. 
run into it the righteous the righteous is one who is found to be standing right in the sight of god and how does a man stand right in the sight of god to him to have embraced jesus that god looks at us and he does not see me as tunji he does not see me as mofoluashola he sees christ in me the hope of glory to be to be to stand firm on the first level here is to be found in christ is to be found having embraced christ having taken up christ having been immersed in christ having been baptized into christ fully clothed in jesus christ and so we are saying to us in here on the first level stand firm the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run to it and are safe and take notes the condition is you have to be righteous don't just be a sinner who runs to jesus and not embracing jesus don't just be a drunkard who runs to jesus and not coming under the lordship of jesus don't just be a wicked fellow who in times of trouble runs to jesus and is not saved by grace he's not saved by jesus the righteous is the one second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 he said he who knew no sin was made sin for us that's referring to jesus he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in him so when you become uncompromisingly righteous because of the finished works of jesus you have appropriated into your life he said the righteous run into that strong tower that the name of jesus offers a bulwark from the storms of life and the righteous are safe there are challenging times upon us friends storms all around the place economic storms corruption storms deception storms identity crisis storms health storms all manner of storms out there but friend as a christian know who you are in christ know what christ has afforded us the righteous run into it or if i may say the righteous run into him and they are safe let me make some progress here I read another dimension here and remember the safety is not in the running the safety is in being found in Jesus safety is of the Lord Psalm 46 from verse 1 a long one here Psalm 46 from verse 1 to verse 7 God is our refuge and strength I love this rich man don't trust in your riches don't pride in your riches jeremiah chapter 10 from verse 22 to verse 23 deals with that rich man don't brag in your riches strong man don't brag in your might knowledgeable man don't brag in your knowledge but listen to this here god is our refuge a refuge is a hiding place a refuge is a fortress a stronghold god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble even god knows that no matter how anointed you are no matter how christian you are there will be times of trouble that will come against us in this world jesus said you will experience tribulations or the troubles of nations he said but be of good cheer i have overcome the world these things i say to you that in me look at that again we're emphasizing on the first level the need to stand fast in jesus don't be found in jesus and looking out for other means of help christ is all in all christ is our sufficiency god is a very present in help in times of trouble he is our refuge and our strength look at this again psalm 46 a very present help in trouble therefore we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea though the, its waters roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with its swellings sailor that is pause and ponder think about it there is a river come on now whose streams shall make glad the city of god friends you are the city of god jesus himself spoke in matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 verse 16 in particular a city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden you are the city of god he said here there is a river the streams whereof make glad the city of god the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved god shall help her may god help you businessman may god be your help politician may god be your help driver may god be your help house help may god be your help a great man may god be your help. may your greatness not be your dependence for help in times of need he said god is in the midst of her and then he says excuse me here um 
the holy place of the tabernacle of the most high god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved god shall help her just at the break of dawn the nations raged the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice the earth melted the lord of hosts or the lord of the armies of heaven the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is our refuge so i'm saying to us in here to stand firm in the first place is to be found in christ stand firm in christ stand firm in christ because christ offers salvation salvation is in christ salvation from sin salvation from eternal damnation salvation is in christ jesus so liberty of freedom is in jesus liberty from bondage liberty from any form of captivity health captivity economic captivity marital captivity the captivity of a solitary life hey friends liberty from bondage or captivity or sin and death is in jesus also i like us to understand here in christ there is also liberty from accusations the bible tells us about the devil that he's walking around as a roaring lion seeking who may devour in another as in first peter chapter 5 in another place in revelation chapter 12 we're made to understand that the accuser of the brethren the brethren in christ the, the one who accuses them by day and by night has been judged and cast down and so listen to this here in case you feel accused by the enemy you you have confessed the situation to god but perpetually you still he keep hearing the voice of accusation oh you will never be forgiven oh you have com committed the unpardonable sin oh you are going the way of hell you will be you you are doomed in hell fire he said listen to me no matter the voice of the accusation in christ there's liberty from accusation liberty from guilt liberty from shame liberty from condemnation do you know there are people even wealthy people even struggling people young people old people whose shoulders are drooping they cannot lift up their heads and look up because they are under the weight of condemnation condemnation of things they did 30 years ago if the, if the enemy the devil makes them feel like it's what they just did now these are things they've talked to the lord about they've repented before the lord about but the accuser keeps accusing them they just feel they can never be free they just feel this thing they've done many years ago they can never be forgiven i speak as a servant of god as an oracle of the most high today no matter where you are accused where you have turned to the lord for mercy where you have turned to the lord in repentance where you have turned to the lord and embraced the blood of jesus may you be free in this place tonight may jesus set you free now you stand firm in that freedom jesus procured for you stand firm in freedom from accusation freedom from guilt freedom from shame freedom from condemnation men may condemn you but god has since spoken over your life go and sin no more remember the woman who was caught in the very act in john chapter 8 the enemies oh, the enemies were the, the devil used all manner of people to harass her they gathered stones they wanted to stone her but jesus came into the picture as a channel of heaven the channel of god in that place and he said he who has come not committed sin let him cast the first stone and one after the other their consciences convicted them and they turned away dropping their stones then she looked he looked at the woman and said woman where are those your accusers he said does no one accuse you condemn you he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more i speak over someone's life here tonight you are under the weight of guilt weight of shame weight of the accusations of the devil continually in your dream you feel accused in the daytime you feel accused tonight jesus sets you free i speak over your life i speak over your destiny i speak over your mind your worldview jesus the son of the living god sets you free hallelujah hallelujah let me take one more scripture here again tonight i mean dealing with standing firm in christ embrace jesus embrace his lordship come under his rulership and you will be free indeed look at this uh, um for those who find themselves under any form of guilt weight accusation first john chapter one i like to read from verse eight into chapter two and to verse two if we say that we have no sin we de we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just 
to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness if we say we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us my little children these things i write to you so that you may not sin and if anyone sins we have an advocate a lawyer with the father jesus christ the righteous he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only but also for this for the sins of the whole world right philippians chapter 3 from verse 7 to verse 9 quickly but what things are were gain to me these i have counted loss for jesus remember the context of this apostle he wrote to the philippian christians from the beginning of that chapter i started to talk about how some people think they can brag it's even me i can brag them all look at my resume look at my past life look at the things i prided in by reason of my natural birth by reason of my nation by reason of my training by reason of the legendary teachers who taught me but look at verse 7 because of time he said but what things were gained to me this i counted loss for christ yet in yet indeed i also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i've suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that i may gain christ friends you gain christ you gain all you embrace christ you become an eternal winner he said that i may gain christ and be found where in him not one leg in one leg out head in body out in him he must baptize completely standing firm in jesus not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is true faith in jesus christ the righteousness which is from god by faith so stand fast in christ in his salvation in his love in his mercy but i take it beyond that don't only embrace jesus at salvation begin to delight in the promises of god that many believers who are completely ignorant of the promises of god there are many believers all over the world from nation to nation who know nothing other than what their pastor tells them so if their pastor is limited in knowledge they become more limited in knowledge if their pastor is not given to sound doctrine of scriptures the bible tells us how the new how the church started in the new testament they were given continually to the apostles doctrine insight from scriptures understanding from scriptures study to show yourself approved of god a what man who needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but you see entire congregations limited in knowledge entire congregations they don't even know what god has afforded them what jesus has afforded them what jesus has procured and secured for them they are limited in knowledge because their pastors are limited in revelation and i'm saying to us in here a second level of your life having embraced jesus a second level of your life where you need to stand firm is to know how to stand on the promises of god there is a song from very um, from very old standing on the promises of christ my savior yeah so stand fast on his promises to be able to stand on those grounds you must know the promises of god carrying the bible is not enough brandishing the bible is not enough hanging a cross with a man hanging on it is not enough study friends know what god has promised can you imagine look at the scenario a rich man dies leaving young children the oldest amongst them is eight years of age but he was a wealthy man he had five children but he had ten houses he had a thriving organization thriving business and so the 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 estate came under administrators because the young the oldest of those children is just about eight years of age and probably the condition is there until it becomes a legal adult which is another 10 years 18 years of age the administrators hold the estate on behalf of those five children now look at a scenario when they become 18 years of age the regents hand them over the copy of their father's will father's estate but the regents interpret to them telling them that look you have only one house when in the will it shows they have 10 houses telling them that look the company we are running and thriving is actually ours it's not your father's and it is in the document that the thriving company multinational company is their fathers and these five young 
people, ladies and men, the youngest amongst them by now, maybe is 15, the oldest among them by now, maybe is 20, five of them. They take the document, they hide it away, and they walk according to the interpretation of the administrators who legally have handed over. They've handed over, but they are puppeteering those children. Are you going to blame those administrators for the manner in which they interpreted these children's father's estate? No, sir. No, ma'am. The children, they had every, they've been to school. They are mature. Maybe the oldest has even graduated. But they refused to read the terms their father left them from 10, 12, 13 years ago. If they read, when they read, they will realize that the multinational company does not belong to the administrators. It belongs to them. If they read, when they read, they will realize that the house their father gave to them is not one but ten. They can even take two, 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 each of the five of them, sharing the ten houses amongst them. This is the case with many of us Christians. God by Jesus. Look at it. God as son came into the world to die. Friends, that death was not cheap. That death was a high premium. That death secured so many things for all believers of all ages. But if you don't search the word of God to know what he has promised you, even your pastor may be limited in knowledge and limited in interp interpretation. Even your environment may limit your access to those things. But when you know that these things are yours, the Bible tells me all things are yours in First Corinthians, I think it's chapter 3. All things are yours. Whether things in heaven or not, Benedia, all things are yours. But you need to read. You need to search. So to be able to stand as a Christian, you must be able to stand not just in Christ, but standing on the promises of God. God has a promise about your health. God has a promise about your relationship. God has a promise about your marriage. God has a promise about challenging times and how the believers can triumph even in challenging times. There's rarely any situation of life for which God, by his son Jesus, has not made a promise to us. So search the scriptures. Jesus said in John chapter 5, In them you think you have eternal life. But they are the very ones that speak concerning me. Search the scriptures, teenager. Search the scriptures. Housewife, spend time searching. Not just searching from market to market. Searching for Insa. Searching for, searching for Ugu. Searching for Periwinkle. Searching for the mundane things of life. Don't be like Martha. Let the one thing that is needful become a priority in your life. Search the scriptures businessman search the scriptures politician search the scriptures within the scriptures you find the promise of the almighty god and the promise of his son the promises of his son jesus to every one of us so stand firm on the promises of god look at this here let me let me you you see job was a man who went through uncommon trials some of us will feel this current lockdown this common pandemic what kind of thing is this is god still in heaven or god has gone on sabbatical somewhere how can god be in heaven and i'm going through this listen to me there are patterns in scriptures that's why we have the comfort of scriptures that if people have been through trying times and they prevailed you can also go through trying times and prevail Job went through trials. Job went through storms. Job went through setbacks. Job lost many things. Lost children, lost health, lost business. But look at the mentality of Job here. A man who chose, who made a choice in the promises of God. Job chapter 23. I want to read from the New International Version. Job chapter 23 from verse 8 to verse 12. Job made a choice to hang in the environment where God could reach him, to hang in the environment where God's word could prevail. Look at this here. But I go to the east, he is not there. If I, I mean, but if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When, I, uh, when he's at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, 
I catch no glimpse of him but he knows the way that I take when he has tested me when he has tried me I will come forth as gold that has been refined in the fire the fires of life the storms of life the fires of pandemic the fires of lockdown the fires of the fear of the unknown many people are captured by fear of the unknown fear of the future fear of old age fear of uncertainty fear of the times in which we live but listen to me he said nevertheless he know he said but he knows the way that i take when he has tested me i will come forth as gold that is tested and refined gold my feet have closely followed his steps i have kept to his way without turning aside not vacillating one moment believing in jesus another moment believing in okija priest he said i my feet have closely followed his steps i have kept to his way without turning aside i have not departed from the commands of his lips i have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread a man who went through trials who went through storms but who still chose that i will hang in the environment of god's word. i will stand on the promise of god he may beat me back and blue he may throw me helter skelter he may shake me he may subject me to uh, uh, daunting times but if i stay in the environment of the world i keep myself in an environment where god can reach me after he has tried me he will elevate me after he has tested me he will promote me can i have a believing amen in the house amen so standing on the promise of god puts the believer within the environment of heaven's infrastructure standing on the promise of god puts the believer in a place where god can easily reach him there are some places where we make it difficult for god to reach us yes god is omnipresent yes god is everywhere but there are some places that when you put yourself there you make the workings of god to become more rapid more enhanced more influential in your life when you stand on the promise of god you stand in an environment where heaven's infrastructure will bring you advantage by heaven's infrastructure infrastructure is what is in a city city infrastructure for example is what makes a city a city the postal service is working electricity is the electric cables they are laid underground they are working they are functioning uh, 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 um internet signals they are running on high speed maybe 1000 megabytes per second everything works economy works healthcare works education works road network works rail network works air travel works that is those are parameters for city infrastructure how about heaven's infrastructure just as you have city infrastructure there are certain things that make heaven heaven there's heaven's economy there's heaven's supply chain there's heaven's value chain there's heaven health care system there's heaven's wisdom there is heaven's educational system that you know some things that were not taught you by teacher in school remember the psalmist in someone in psalm 119 you read from verse 98 to verse 100 he said because i delight in the word of god god has given me more understanding than the ancients that shows me heaven's infrastructure on an educational level bringing revelation beyond scholarship so when you stand on the promise of god you live your life based on god's word you live your life based on god's promises you put yourself in the environment of heaven's infrastructure where angels can be deployed and they locate you and they find you where you ought to be found because jesus lived his life in the environment of heaven's infrastructure even in death angels could minister to him even in death an angel came and rolled away the stone even at birth when he couldn't help himself angels ministered to him angels delivered him angels protected him those are parts of heaven's infrastructure when you live your life on the promises of god on the basis of god's word hallelujah so standing on the promise of god puts the believer within the environment of heaven's infrastructure 
for heaven's resources heaven's economy heaven's supplies heaven's healthcare system heaven's educational system heaven's value chain listen to this again galatians chapter 5 from verse 1 stand fast therefore in the liberty by which christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage indeed i paul said to you that if you become circumcised christ will profit you nothing and i testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that is a debtor to keep the whole law you have become estranged or divorced from christ you who attempt to be justified by law you have fallen from grace a third one here quickly stand firm in christ stand firm in his salvation and then stand firm on the promises of god don't stand on on the basis of your culture or your looks don't stand on the basis of your education alone stand on his word. heaven and earth may pass away education of 30 years ago may not be relevant today but god's word endures forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached to you stand on the promises of god on a third level stand firm for godly causes stand firm in christ stand firm on his word stand firm for your life should be for a purpose a heavenly purpose revelation chapter 4 and verse 11 thou art worthy O god to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things you have created all men you have created all bachelors you have created all ladies you have created all spinsters you have created all families you have created all things for your pleasure friends there is a divine purpose over your life don't live an aimless life don't live a life on a frolic of your own live a life back by heaven live a life prepared by heaven live a life that is for a heavenly cause heavenly purposes stand firm for godly causes god can use you to be light to those in darkness god can use you to be a source of help to an orphan out there god can use you to be a source of help to a blind man out there god can use you as a source of help to a destitute lady out there live for godly causes what did i say here friends live for godly causes as a believer in jesus christ part of our god-given mandate is to embrace godly values and godly virtues the believer must embrace righteousness truth and mercy in the midst of a perverse generation irrespective of the environment in which we walk the environment in which we live the environment in which we school the environment in which we do business we have a god-given duty to live for god to live to please god to live for godly causes hear this from god's word philippians chapter 2 from verse 14 to verse 16 do all things without complaining do all things without disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of god without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation there is crookedness in our neighborhoods there is crookedness in our schools there's crookedness in our society there's crookedness from our leaders spiritual leaders civil leaders and social leaders leaders of thought there's crookedness everywhere he said but here friends he said without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast the word of life so that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain or labored in vain hear this from psalm 40 psalm 45 from verse 3 to verse 4 guard your sword upon your thigh O mighty one with your glory and your majesty and in your majesty ride prosperously because of truth humility and righteousness he said and your right hand shall teach you or some things your right hand so we're saying to us on a third level here stand for godly causes stand as a as 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 a lighthouse in the midst of darkness stand as eyes to the blind stand to be legs to the lame 
stand to, to, to be brain to the dollar be a so look at job's life the same virtues we talk about the virtuous woman of proverbs chapter 31 you can match with the virtuous man you find in job in job chapter 29 it was eyes to the blind it was a source of help to the poor it, when widows saw him they found hope when offers found him they found hope when oppressors saw him they trembled job stood for righteousness job stood for godly causes can god depend on you in your family that there will be a righteous voice in this family because of you can god depend on you and your family that there will be meekness a virtue of heaven humility a virtue of heaven because you are found in that place of work can god depend on you as a channel of righteousness a channel of humility a channel of truth is truth is scarce in the streets and then men locate you can god beat his chest like he beat his chest concerning job bragging to the devil about job have you considered my servant job god's bragging brought job problems god's bragging brought job challenges god's bragging brought job sickness god's bragging brought job loss of all children in one day loss of all businesses in one day but god backed him up better is the end was the end of job than his beginning god gave to job double in the end for everything he lost in the course of his life because job stood fair for godly causes he knows the way that i take and when he has tried me i shall come forth as gold all the days of my appointed time will i wait on the lord not on schemers not on frosters he said all the days of my appointed time will i wait until my change comes god bragged about job it brought him trouble for a while but it brought him lifting in the end god revealed great things about joseph joseph in his father's house joseph in the waterless pit joseph in potiphar's house joseph in the prison house joseph in potiphar's house stood for righteousness stood for meekness stood for truth it brought him problems for a while but it brought him lifting in the end mordecai is it esther's uncle mordecai mordecai stood for righteousness mordecai stood for honesty it cost him obscurity for a season people have been elevated around him the one who rescued the king's life was forgotten but righteousness exalted mordecai in the end i will close i will not be able to get into the fourth point today i'll close on this note today but remember dear friends listeners viewers watching on live stream and those who watch this here after now make up your mind to be found in christ stand firm in jesus in his salvation in his love stand on his promises stand for godly causes live your life for not just charitable causes to give your make a name for yourself live your life for god jesus lived his life for god people of esteem in the light of eternity were not just people who put their feet on the sands of time they put their feet in the sands of eternity live your life for causes that are dear to god's heart live your life for causes for which jesus laid down his life to set captives free to open the eyes of the blind to mend the brokenhearted live your life standing firm for godly causes and god will remember you for good and god will delight in you and where men are saying there is casting down you will be able to say there is lifting up because you have chosen to be acquainted with him and to walk in his ways and to stand on his promises and to live a life for heavenly purposes and eternal ramifications may the lord bless you may the lord delight in you may the lord do awesome things beautiful things eternal things in your life friends any form of captivity you find yourself in as this word goes forth may you break loose from them may you break free from them the same way the prison gate opened of his own accord by angelic support heaven's infrastructure for peter and he walked free into the streets may you walk free out of captivity walk out of addictions walk out of for on, for on falsehood walk out of a life of fraud walk out of the fear of the unknown fear of uncertainty 
fear of the future fear of old age walk out on the devil friends and stand free stand firm stand fast in the liberty wherewith christ has made you free whosoever the sun sets free is free indeed what an awesome time in the presence of the lord tonight i like us to just magnify him and worship him and honor him for such a time in his presence because we have not just heard his word as we heed his word the power to be healed the power to be delivered the power to be elevated the power to be secure will tabernacle with every one of us hallelujah 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 Father, we thank you for an awesome time in your presence. We thank you for those who have heard this and those who will hear this hereafter. We thank you because your word has gone forth. It will not return to you empty. We thank you because there is power in your word to transform, to liberate, to empower, to elevate, and to establish. That which you have started amongst us, finish it and set captives free indeed. Thank you, Father, because we have prayed in jesus name before we close let's honor the lord with our substance it's part of our spiritual worship it's not an issue of coercion it's not an issue of threat it's a free will choice but you can make a choice to honor the lord with your substance and with the first fruits of your increase the details of how you can honor the lord on this platform you find on your screen at this time let's honor the lord with our substance in this moment and the lord bless us the lord delight in us and honor his word in our lives as we stand in christ stand firm on his word and stand for godly causes in the precious name of jesus amen amen lord bless your people bless our gifts bless our offerings bless the tithes bless the substance of our lives we bring to you in worship and let your name be blessed be hallowed and glorified in our lives thank you father because we're prayed in jesus name before we close with the benediction remember prayer conference is coming up august 6 to 8 with the theme prayer shield it's going to be an awesome time you can hook up with us anywhere on the face of the earth we'll have three corporate sessions of prayer per day even as we pray and fast in the course of the day 6 a.m to 7 a.m 12 midday to 1 p.m 6 p.m to 7 p.m three hours of corporate coming together virtually online every day over those three days it's going to be an awesome time god will let loose new things god will let loose new things over our lives over our church over the cities of god and over the people of god the lord bless his word the lord bless his name in our lives in jesus name let's share the benediction together from hebrews chapter 13 i'd like you to personalize that as we confess it hebrews chapter 13 from verse 20 to verse 21 now may the god of peace who brought up our lord jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make me complete in every good work to do his will walking in me what is pleasing well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen and amen and amen and amen god bless you all have a good night and save moments to your various destinations. Mm -hmm.